Hello, it's your boy, the one and only Sir Patrick from the Department of Biology. So, welcome again to another lecture for another day of your Bio 102 Pythology class. So this time, we'll talk about Pythology in the Philippine context. And yes, good morning, UP Baguio. So welcome to Lecture 4, Pycology in the Philippine Context, by yours truly, Sir Patrick James M. Penang. So let's first have the objectives for our lesson of today. By the end of the lecture discussion, the students should have been able to, number one, be familiarized with the brief history and economic impacts of pycology in the country. Number two, recognize the various Filipino scientists who contributed much to the study of algae. And number three, to acquire a sense of pride with regards to contribution of the Philippines to the fields of pycology. So let's first have an outline of our lecture of today. The first one will have the brief history of your pycology. The next one would have the utilization of algae. We'll focus on different food species that we use in the Philippines, the sources of pycoloids, the economic importance of algae in our economy. So let's have the brief history of pycology in the Philippines. So, in a nutshell, there could be three important points of pycology in terms of its history and its relation to the Philippines. The first one would be our experience with foreign oceanographic explorer. The second one would be the problems and the burning of collections during the bombing in World War II by the Japanese. And three, the thousands of papers continued by local scientists and researchers, as well as students. So, yeah, during the first um, portion of psychology and its relationship with the Philippines, we have various Russian oceanographic explorers that explored Manila Bay in the presence of various species of Gracilaria. Then come Father Blanco, an Agustinian priest who wrote and included in his Flora de Filipinas some species of your algae. Then in 1844, Montagne published his collection of H. Cumming. Then come your Siboga expedition which possessed the largest collection in Sulu. Then in 1901, Barton published his collection of the Siboga Expedition. In 1900s and in 1930, Filipino botanist Kisumbing and Merrill, with Merrill, uh, published a lot of, well, aside from your botan botanical source resources we know we all know Merrill for that he also published they also published and included quite a lot of um, species of your algae in their publications then in 1919 and 1922 freshwater species are being studied uh, collectively by different scientists and then during the 1945 and 1940s to 1945, we experienced World War II and the wrath of Japanese bombing, of, especially of Manila. In 1950s, come the discovery of thermal algae. And in 1960s, we also uh, discovered some blue-green blue algae in the Philippines. And in 1964, as our ties with the Japanese uh, is being held great and improving si since World War II, we are now having joint expedition 
with Japan, Japanese um, scientists in northern Luzon. And in 1970s onward, local scientists produced at least 42 publications on seaweed flora. And during the present, you can now only fathom how much um, our scientists have contributed to the study of algae. Okay? So, yeah, the species diversity according to Silva in 1897. in 1987 sorry so silva during his time in 1987 has uh, identified at least 820 species of marine macrobentic algae macrobentic algae in which he identified yeah, they identified 472 red algae 214 green algae and at least 134 brown algae during the time of velasquez Velasquez in 1989 he identified 1145 total species of algae in the Philippines and 600 of those 1045 is can be found in freshwater sources now in the time of Trono this is, I think, 1997. He identified 96 species of red algae, 76 species of green algae, and 45 species of brown algae. So this is yours truly, uh, yours truly. This is uh, Dr. Gavino C. Trono. Uh, he is a national scientist. So he is the one that I am referring to earlier in our meet, the Zoom meetings back then. So, Dr. Trono is a national scientist and was proclaimed you know, as a national scientist um, during the time of Benigno Aquino III. No? Yung yumaong, si Yumaong Benigno Aquino. Si Noy Noy, si Yumaong Noy Noy. During uh, 13th of March 2004. So, Trono is known for his local contribution and the local and in international contribution in terms of seaweed flora you can see a lot of papers a lot of papers of dr trono and he is really keen on studying seaweed biodiversity and especially marine phycology in the philippines so, so this is one of the books that i was uh, referring to yeah, during our discussion so this is field guide and atlas of seaweed resources in the philippines by Gavino C. Trono. So, Gavino, uh, Dr. Trono is uh, our national scientist, or one of uh, the national scientists that we are proud of. <laughs> so, yeah, <clears throat> Dr. Gavino Trono specializes on seaweeds and is the authority when it comes to Philippine taxonomy of your macroalgae. So, uh, you can browse here a lot, and he have identified uh, we, also use, or we also use this field guide when identifying different um, macroalgae types. So it's a very good uh, field guide because it has a dichotomous key as well as different um, types of red algae, especially red algae. Different species of, of algae that we can see in the field. So. It's a very good uh, reference material because you can see most of them in the field. It has descriptions of that species and how it is different from the other species. And there's a dedicated dichotomous key to cross-reference them and to um, identify them quite uh, easily. So yeah. This is the one. This is uh, under Filipiniana section of UP Baguio. So uh, another scientist that I would like to mention is our one and only chair of the biology department. So he also studies, um, he also specializes on uh, genetic, I think genetic transformation of your E. coli using uh, genes no, from different mi mi microalgae. Naman siya. 
Oh, this is one of his paper back in 1997 pa yan. This is his thesis. He showed me. So, yeah. He studied, uh, I think, Sinecococcus, yes, SP. Genetic transformation of your uh, Sinecococcus A. Again, Sinecococcus siya ay cyanobacterium, di ba? Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Ito yung mga appendices niya noon. Nung hindi pa ata ako pinapangana. Eh, hindi. Isang taon pa lang ako. So, ganyan daw yung mga... Ganito yung mga vials namin, no? Hanggang ngayon. Ang ganda pa rin na ito ang mga setup nila. So, yeah. Diyan nila kinukulture yung mga microalgae nila, the data, and so on and so forth. So, yan, no? Ang ganda ng quality ng mga printing nun. So, yan, si Sinacococcus. Diba? Ang ganda ng printing. <laughs> Hindi pa rin nagkumupas. Tignan nyo yung mga bands, no? Ang ganda ng mga bands. Hindi kumupas. Kahit medyo old na itong publication na to. So, yeah. Kung gusto nyo mag-thesis sa uh, in terms ng mga microalgae, uh, pwede-pwede nyo lapitan si Dr. Kalugay for that. No? Yan yung mga expertise na. So, yeah. Dr. Trono is one of the authority in macroalgae and Philippine seaweed in the Philippines. So, might have come across Dr. Trono and Dr. Kalugay in your in your quest no? in our psychology life. So, we'll now move to so I would like to say sorry for the other scientists that I did not mention. So they are they, in microbio we tell the, the students that when there's too many to count, you declare PNTC. Too numerous to count. No? So there are a lot of scientists uh, doing their research, especially in MSI. So uh, if you can't find one here in UP Baguio, uh, a scientist that would help you uh, in your quest in studying uh, these microalgae, these algae communities no? in the Philippines, I suggest you go to MSI. Of course, we have contacts to through MSI. We can push you right through there. I think um, Doctor Doctor Muji Kiwis, M Muji Doctor Muji Kiwis also in MSI also studies. Um, uh, I think microalgae and algae because these are feed for. I not in MSI in BFAR, I think yeah. So BFAR in MSI can really help you in your thesis if you want to pursue uh, a topic on micro and macroalgae and seaweed in the Philippines. So yeah, I also have one of my students um, who pushed through with the topic on um, antibacterial and anti-helminthic, I think, properties of microalgae, uh, micro, macroalgae, so sargassum, they isolated a lot of epiphytes of your sargassum. And yep, so those are your, those are what ifs, no? <clears throat> so now we'll move on to the utilization of algae. So we'll talk about it as being a food species, a source of picocolloids. What are those picocolloids? And, uh, sorry, oh, and what are the economic importance of your algae? So of the 820 species recorded um, during the time of Silva, 350 species are known to have some economic value, although only about 5% are economically important to the Philippines. So under the utilization of algae, under food species, these are the ones that we considered edible. <laughs> so ito yung mga nakakain, no? Ika nga. Uh, yeah, food, food source, no? We have acanthoporas, pisifera. A lot of kaulerpa, ito yung pinang mga paborito natin. The kaulerpas of the world. So, ayan si Resimosa, Peltata, Taxifolia, Intricatum, and Barletiae. So, we also have Yukuma, Podium Edule, Gracilaria SP, and many more. Porpila, Gelidiella, the Jelly Ace, <laughs> Kababaikus, Haldaplatrus, Sinaya, Sinaya, and many more. So, Yan yung mga nakakain natin. Naimas data. <laughs> okay, moving on to sources of our pycophalloids. Ah, um, mm. 
ay bumalik sources of picofolloid so so for the sources of uh, picofolloids we have your class of organism called agarophytes these are we have the classes of organism called caragenophytes and we have also have your alginophytes so for the agarophytes these are the sources of agar and we all know agar as a gelling agent in your petri dishes <laughs> in your bio 120 classes so that's your agar it's a good uh, solidifying agent because it has no uh, it has no bacterial nutritive property so it cannot be digested normally by your bacteria so we have um, sources of this such as your gracilaria and gelidiella we have under your caraginopites the source of your caraginin caraginin so this is for your capopicus sources are your capopicus eucuma hypnia and acanthopora so your Caraginan is used as a food additive, usually used as a food additive in most of our foods, no? And in also, um, caraginan is used as a, a binding agent too in makeups, as well as your agar. It's used as a binder, no? It's also, agar is also used as an additive in food industry, actually. So in your alginopites, naman, your alginopites, right here is a source of alginates your alginate is alginic acid so alginic lagay lang natin alginic acid so alginate alginate or alginic acid is mostly sourced through brown algae alginate is used as an additive in food and also used in textile and pharmaceutical industry so that's your alginate so if you want to have a research on sources of alginate you can source them through uh, species like your sargassum turbinaria and hydroclatus all of these are species of your brown algae and economic importance so in terms of economic importance your algae uh, algae can be a source of so aside from being food source aside from having sources of picofolloid they can be a source of growth regulators so remember yung uh, chlorella growth factor <laughs> ng ating ano man tawag dun sa supplements na yan uh, huwag sabihin baka maano tayo makasuhan tayo anyway so yeah meron tayong um, most of them can be a source of antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal uh, drugs. No? So, meron silang yung mga crude extract usually ng uh, mga algae natin. Pwedeng sources ng mga drugs. No? So, yeah. They can also have antihelmintic, vermifuge, and laxative properties. They are usually used, some of them are used for treatment of dysentery and diarrhea. Some local communities are even use, are even using the, these uh, uh, seaweeds and these algae for treatments of that. They can be a good way of controlling heavy metal pollution sa bioremediation naman to. So ang gagawin ng mga algae natin, itatanim natin siya or paparimihin natin siya dun sa sabihin natin uh, na pollute na lugar no fresh water or sa marine pwede din no so uh, paparamihin natin sila i-absorb nila yung mga heavy metal dun sa site at i-keep nila yun dun sa katawan nila para hindi na uh, masira yung ibang uh, mga uh, organism dun sa ecosystem natin so yeah they can also be a good insect repellent sources of vitamins and minerals and they are usually components of animal feeds. So, <clears throat> so before, they are using, and yung mga researches ni Dr. Mujikiwis, um, ginagamit niya yung, nag-aaral siya ng mga microalgae kasi daw, uh, magandang pagkain to animal feed ng mga fish natin. No? <clears throat> and sometimes they can also be a source of tannins and peanuts. So, Ito naman mga tannins and phenols natin. Ito yung mga, pati mga polyaromatic alcohols natin. So, pwedeng maging source yung algae. And alam natin na mayroong mga magandang gawin sa mga tannins and phenols na yan. 
lalo na sa <clears throat> as a uh, sa perfume industry sa pati na sa sa ating um dun sa mga production lines no pwede ding gawin si Tanin as a, a varnish di ba kumada lang nyo <clears throat> yeah so pinols and tocopinols mga ganyan and uh, lastly uh, your algae can be used for biofiltration so <clears throat> Uh, they can be used to uh, filter out uh, unwanted dirt from your water. So yeah, it's a lot of things that you can do with your algae. So there are many ways to utilize them. Ganun naman tayo mga tao. We like to use things for our own uh, purpose, greedy purpose. Anyway, so for me as a as a as an individual, <laughs> for me as a psychology teacher i like algae on their own and i like algae on my plate and i like algae in sushi and in ramen <laughs> so yeah ganun ganun lang ako but i like algae as a standalone i like them for their intrinsic value na nasa kanila without having the utilization aspect the utility aspect of your algae i love them So yeah, <laughs> economic another economic importance is yung ating mga uh, algae for sa seaweed seaweed ano seaweed seaweed livelihood seaweed farming. So kung maapunta kayo sa La Union dito sa uh, Parawir, merong school na alimutan ko yung pangalan ng school na nagano nag nagpaparami ng mga sargas. So they have seaweed farming talaga. So, hindi lang yan sa Palawan, sa Buwanga, Batangas, at mga uh, Sulu, Tawitawi, and Mindanao. Meron din yan sa atin dito, no? <clears throat> sa, sa, sa Norte, pati sa La Union at sa Bandang Ilocos. Madaming seaweed farming dyan. Na magandang livelihood method. Na source, source ng uh, both ng food at ng uh, income dun sa local communities na nandun. So usually, yung mga pinaparami natin dito is si Lacatopaikus, Yukiuma, Kaulerfa, Lentifera. Yung mga Kaulerfa na yan, usually ang masasarap kasi. At si Lagra, si Larry. <clears throat> so, yeah, ang um, estimate nila ng seaweed production uh, at ng export of your Pilipi- uh, ng, ng Pilipinas sa ibang bansa at yung normal yung kinikita natin. <clears throat> Noong 1990 to 1995, ay about $291 thousand dollars in dollars yan yeah. uh, average kumikita tayo per year ng 48 48,000 dollars uh, through uh, export in dry weight na algae productions na so in terms naman of your dry dried seaweeds refined carrageenan and <clears throat> and refined carrageenans we uh, in 1996 um, way way back we we produced a total of 146,000 um, in tons ng dry weight ng mga, <clears throat> mga produkto. So, um, yeah, it's a very good uh, source of livelihood and income. And a lot of the other things that we mentioned earlier. So, if you want to venture out on uh, using algae, uh, why not? You can use that as a thesis for your... Uh, uh, undergraduate thesis your bio in your bio 200 class so why not no? there are good sources of them if you want to study microbial communities and assemblages in microalgae uh, in my, both micro and microalgae yung mga <clears throat> if you want to study cell biology we have the acetabularia and the synocytic uh, organism then It's a good model organisms, all of them, most of them, yung mga, lalo na yung mga malaking unicellular na mga organism na yan. Yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good way to go for your scientific journey. So, yan lang tayo for today, and I hope you enjoyed the very short lecture that we have, that we had. And, once again, this is Sir Patrick, peace out.